What's up, Ada Nation? Welcome to Dapp Central, your home for everything blockchain and crypto. Today, we're diving into some of the latest updates when it comes to the MinSwap protocol. Now, MinSwap is arguably the largest and most adopted DEX here within the Cardano ecosystem, really being around since the inception of smart contracts on Cardano. Now, over the course of the past couple of months, specifically back in November of 2023, we saw the release in the highlight of MinSwap V2. This brings a host of brand new features, including faster throughput, the ability to add more customizable features, as well as the launch and adoption of MinSwap Pro. Now, before we dive into that and the timeline surrounding when we, when we can expect for that to come online, I want to quickly go ahead and plug in a recent Twitter space that I had the pleasure of sitting down and hosting alongside the MinSwap team, as well as Aperture breaking down their recent tokenomics report. So for today, I'm going to quickly recap the highlights from this Twitter space, touching on the tokenomics report, their brand new stable swap feature, and what the team has envisioned moving forward for that, as well as V2. And then last but not least, some of their latest DAO governance votes. So if you do enjoy updates like these, I would appreciate you if you could smash that thumbs up. If it's your first time stopping by, consider subscribing. And last but not least, if you have any questions, then make sure to leave them down below. Now, if you want to go ahead and listen to this in its entirety, I recommend that. It's about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes long. I'll leave the link to that down below. Do keep in mind that Twitter spaces are recorded and available for about 30 days. So it won't be available 30 days following the date that this particular video is posted. But if you are watching this before that timeline, you should be able to go ahead and listen in. Now, following the actual review or the release of this report, we had Aperture who basically gave us a summarization of the report findings. And to break this down into a nutshell, the liquidity when it comes to the Dow Treasury is oversaturated with min slash ADA. Now, the team is trying to figure out exactly how they can best put this min and ADA um, to use with a couple of suggestions. So again, I'll leave the link to this particular article down below. But this breaks down the fact that as it stands right now, the TVL on the min swap decks is mostly made up of the min pool, right? So that's min slash ADA, where that is the main leader with over 40 to 60% of the TVL. Now, in the month of May, we saw pools like SNEC, IUSD, and Bank gain a lot of adoption. But from a visual standpoint, here we have that breakdown. So you'll notice here, at the very bottom, um, we have like this purplish color. That is the ADA slash min pool, followed by ADA slash AGIX, which comes in at around number two. And then you can see that the remaining pools have a smaller and smaller portion of the TVL on the DEX. Additional findings from this report break down the efficiency of the pools. So the efficiency is measured by taking the volume divided by the TVL on a given day. Again, we see that while the min swap pool or the min slash ADA pool has the majority of the liquidity, it's actually the least efficient pool, meaning that you could take some of this liquidity, especially if it's owned by the DAO, and put that to work, for example, by putting that into a lending and borrowing protocol or by using those funds to increase marketing and engagement around the min swap decks. Now, the most efficient pool right now appears to be the ADA slash friend pool followed by ADA slash SNEC. So very surprising to see that while the min swap pool or the min token pool is the largest, it's the least efficient in that we have two um, meme coin pools that appear to be the most efficient when we take a look at the volume divided by the TVL. Next we have, let's see here, the actual amount of protocol owned liquidity so as you'll notice here, we have a lot of assets coming in from the LBE. This was essentially when MinSwap was um, first rolling out into the community and they had a token launch or token sale where anybody could have contributed. Following that, we have assets coming in from the fee switch as well as batcher fee. So anytime that a user makes a swap on the protocol, there's a little bit of that that goes back over into the DAO. And then for the launch bowl, anytime that another project, for example, like Fluid Tokens, or, or smart places launches directly on the MinSwap protocol, a portion of what they launch from their LBE goes back over to the MinSwap DAO. So this is the breakdown here. Right now, around $8 million, almost $9 million 
currently available within the min swap treasury. Now, if I scroll down a little bit, let me make sure you go back here. We have a couple of suggestions as to how these funds could be better spent. So suggestion number one is to use the min, right, which is available as a part of the DAO treasury to incentivize marketing as well as content creators. Myself being a content creator, I can get behind this particular option. I think that it's always great to allow for other people to find out about the protocol by putting funds directly owned by the DAO into those particular efforts. The second option is to incentivize mint stakers with additional mint. So right now you are able to stake your mint tokens. There's a lockup period. If you go ahead and withdraw before the lockup period completes, you do run the risk of forfeiting your rewards, but this could also um, make it a little bit easier, right? Or a little bit more lucrative for anybody who's on the fence about staking. So taking right now some of the liquidity and providing that as reward for existing mint stakers. Suggestion number three is to have token swaps with other projects. Again, all this was discussed during that Twitter space, but imagine the mint swap team taking their token and providing that to another team in exchange for their asset, potentially also being listed on the mint swap decks. So this would essentially be a swap of Cardano native tokens between different projects, obviously ones that have been vetted and ones that are trusted here within the Cardano community. Now, the last piece here is suggestion number four, which is to use a portion of the ADA slash min LP for providing liquidity to a centralized exchange. This doesn't necessarily mean selling those assets, but providing that directly on a centralized exchange, making it easier for anybody who isn't directly in the ecosystem or that doesn't want to go ahead and download a Cardano based wallet, the ability to pick up the min swap token. So that was the first half of the Twitter space, breaking down the tokenomics report. Again, tune in to the official space if you guys want to get all the details surrounding that. Now, following that, we did talk a little bit about MinSwap V2, and we heard directly from Perito. So Perito works with the team, and he was nice enough to break down what they're currently working on and give us a timeline as to when we can expect for V2 to come online. So some of the features when it comes to V2 include five times faster trading speeds, a brand new UI redesign, their smart order router to allow for better routing of potential token swaps, pro mode, advanced orders, min wallet upgrade, as well as profiles. In addition, they're going to be providing us with real-time market data, the ability to provide your own strategies, technical analysis tools, as well as alerts and tracking. So quite a bit there, but in a nutshell, Perito gave us an, an update stating that right now, a lot of the resources are going towards V2 and their smart contract audit that should be lined up hopefully within the next month or two and that we should expect to see more surrounding V2 in or around the next month or two as well. So very, very interesting to hear quite a bit to, to digest here, right? In terms of brand new features and brand new things that we'll have the ability to do when it comes to V2. Following that, we briefly did speak about their stable swap feature. So if you missed this, stable swaps allows for you to swap between one stable asset that's pegged to um, a particular fiat or just a particular commodity for another stable asset tied to that same exact fiat or that same exact commodity. As an example, let's say, for example, you have um, the US dollar backed stable coin, um, i.e. JED or the IUSD token from Indigo or even wrap USDC from one chain, you can swap one asset for another, given the fact that they are of the same value. Now, this allows for you to swap larger amounts without making a huge price impact, as long as there's enough liquidity available for you to make that swap. Now, what the team mentioned with the stable swap feature is that this is essentially permissionless. They are willing to work with other protocols in order to onboard more um, stable assets. And then they're also working to add more um, stable coins, given that that's what they originally launched with. So Minth and adding support for USDM are right around the corner. And they want to make sure that they work with those teams to make sure that those get done correctly. But then also when they ran their initial test or their initial um, research for the assets that are currently provided, we didn't have support for USDM. And I don't think that they were too familiar with the Mint stablecoin. So those were excluded initially, but the team will be working to add those moving forward. So last but not least, we did talk about a centralized exchange listing coming down for the MintSwap team. And the team was nice enough to give us some alpha with the support, or at least a proposal, I should say, 
going out towards gate.io as well as MEXC for centralized exchange listings. This is impressive to hear. Obviously, Minswap is a huge um, contributor here to Cardano. They've carried a lot of weight here. They've been very meticulous in terms of developing, but then also very responsive when it comes to um, answering the community's calls. So one of those was to get Minswap into the broader crypto community, and that's done through a centralized exchange listing. Now we've seen Cornucopius, Indigo, Butane, Iagon, just to name a few already listing on Maxi. And it looks like that is going to be the place to go for Minswap as well. We've also seen other protocols listing on, get, uh, excuse me, on gate.io, which includes Iagon, Paribus, and a few others here within the Cardano ecosystem as well. So both of those, I think, are relatively utilized and well-known centralized exchanges. And it's good to hear that the Minswap team is aiming to go ahead and get on those platforms. So that will do it here for today's brief recap of the space. Please make sure to go ahead and check out the entire space. But I want to go ahead and just provide an update for anybody who hasn't been keeping up with Minswap. We do have V2 right around the corner. We have some suggestions as to how to better improve the tokenomics in the distribution of Min tokens back over to stakers or potentially even over into liquidity for centralized exchanges. If you learn anything along the way as a part of today's video, updating you guys surrounding Minswap in the Cardano ecosystem, I would appreciate you if you could smash that thumbs up. If it's your first time stopping by Dapp Central and you want more content like this, breaking down all the builders in the ecosystem, consider subscribing. And last but not least, if you have any questions for me surrounding anything I've brought up today, then make sure to leave a comment down below. That said, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.